Hello guys, Winston here. Last week, as I was preparing to make a video about speeds and feeds for single flute cutters, I was lamenting the lack of a functional part to demonstrate my toolpaths on. Over the past few months, I've made dozens of random desk tchotchkes and otherwise inert demo pieces, and that's great and all, but after a while, you start to wonder if there's more to life than making really, really, really ridiculously useless parts. And that same morning, a video from Alex French Guy Cooking popped up on my YouTube feed with a delightful open source dough sheeter. Now, I'm no baker, but when I saw that video, and specifically that machine, I saw a perfect learning opportunity. The side brackets of that dough sheeter have pockets with tight tolerances to receive bearings and a relatively simple profile. And if that doesn't scream case study to you, I don't know what does. So I downloaded Alex's files and opened them up in Fusion 360. Here's what I was working with. Two parts, one a mirror of the other. Along the straight edge of each are three 22mm pockets, and on the opposite side are a pair of 4mm holes. Overall part thickness, 8mm, easily machinable from 3 8 inch thick stock. This should be a very simple part to make, but there are a few things we need to consider first. Number one, this internal corner. It's fine if you're going to 3D print it, but you can't cut perfect corners with round cutting tools, so let's put in a fillet here. Number two, I don't like this sharp exterior corner. The edges on machined aluminum pieces are sharp enough as is, I don't need another way to stab myself with this part, so let's put a 1mm fillet here. Number three, there's this countersink on the back, and while I could absolutely flip this part over and machine that feature, you have to ask yourself, A, is this something you could do by hand, and B, do you even need this feature? Could you use panhead screws here instead of countersunk hardware? And based on the function of these holes, the answer to both of those questions is a resounding yes, so ignoring that feature dramatically simplifies the machining of these parts. I'm going to do a little rearranging here to cut out these brackets more efficiently from my piece of stock material, and then go into my setup in Fusion. First, I have my stock defined with a generous margin because I want my adaptive roughing toolpath to believe it's fully surrounded by material. If you don't do this, Fusion will sometimes assume that it can enter your stock from the side, and if you didn't do a good job of zeroing out your machine, that's an easy way to crash into unexpected material. So I'm going to do everything I can to keep this toolpath working from the inside out. Next, I'm going to use a pocketing operation to clean up the top faces of these brackets. And then we can get to the fun part, the features whose dimensions actually matter. I'm going to start by roughing out the bearing pockets with an adaptive toolpath. My cutting parameters are 18,000 RPM, 38 inches per minute, a depth of cut of 70 thou, and an optimal load of 20 thou. I'm keeping 12 thou of radial stock to leave, and half of that in axial. I want there to be no possible way that my CNC exceeds the dimensions of this pocket, even with the worst possible vibration or tool deflection. Once those pockets are roughed out, I'll use a boring operation to bring the walls to what should theoretically be their nominal dimensions. But in the event that a 608 bearing doesn't fit in this pocket, I'll have a subsequent boring operation queued up to make the necessary corrections. I'll also clean up the through holes on the bottom that would allow a shaft to pass through the bearing, even though the dimensions of this hole shouldn't really matter. And then we can cut out the part. I'm using a 2D contour toolpath with a 15 thou step down and a 2 thou chip load, which corresponds to 36 inches per minute here. After that, I'm running a finishing pass and then a spring pass after that just to erase any layer lines. And last but not least, a boring operation with an eighth inch end mill to make the four millimeter holes. Nothing too tricky here, let's see how this actually machines. I'm using double-sided tape to stick some aluminum to my wasteboard because quite frankly I'm lazy and I hate using tabs and clamps. And to compensate for the thickness of the tape since I'm trying to zero at what should be the bottom of my stock, I'm throwing a sticker underneath my touch probe. The sticker is 10 thousandths of an inch thick, my adhesive is nominally 8 thou, so I should theoretically end up with a 2 thou onion skin give or take a small margin of error. And once I figure out my zero in X and Y, we're good to go. Turn on the router, plug in the hydroponic pump for air blast, and watch the chips fly. First, we're taking that 0.375 inch thick stock down to about 0.32, and then removing that last 5 thou with a pocketing operation to bring it down to 8 millimeters with good surface finish. Then we do the bearing pockets. And then the contour cutout. Now I should note that the optional toolpath I'd mentioned before to achieve a snug fit for 22mm bearings was something I had dialed in during a previous test. Because without any adjustments, holes tend to come out undersized on CNCs because of backlash. With that extra boring operation, I told Fusion to blow out my hole by an extra 2 or 3 thou radially, and that did the trick. Time for a tool swap to the 8th inch end mill, bore out the last two holes, and that is machining done.
To tidy things up, I first used pliers to take off any residual onion skin on the part, and then used a deburring tool to clean up the edges of the holes. Finally, I used a deburring wheel to soften all the edges and polish up the faces, particularly on the backside of these brackets which are completely unmachined. And the last thing to do was to press in my bearings. I don't have any fancy tools to do this, but I do have some refrigerated bearings and a heat gun which I use to warm up my parts. Leveraging thermal expansion and contraction makes this step a little bit easier. I lined up my bearings and used a small block of aluminum to distribute the load, and then tapped my bearings into their pockets with a hammer. Overall, these are very simple parts to make, but it was a good way to practice some fundamentals of cam and machining. These pieces are headed over to Alex in France for his enjoyment, but if you want to machine your own dough sheeter brackets instead of printing them, I'll have a link to my fusion file in the description below. Just note that my speeds and feeds for initial roughing are for a single flute end mill. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back soon with more CNC projects.